I've seen a lot of headlines today saying strangest print I've ever seen. Are you in that camp? Well, it's certainly a huge gap between the establishment survey, the payroll numbers, and the household survey, i.e. the unemployment rate, with this four-tenths decline in the unemployment rate, 1.1 million increase in household employment. Normally, you would put a lot more weight on the establishment survey numbers because they're much less volatile from month to month. However, I think in this case, I would put a little bit more weight than normal on the, on, on the household survey, partly because the numbers were so impressive in the, in the household survey, and partly because the, there, there may be some questions around just seasonal adjustment in general in such an unusual period as this one. And I would observe that the, the, the payroll numbers on a seasonally unadjusted basis were above 700,000. Now, you know, that, I'm not saying that's the right number, but what I am saying is that it's probably a little bit harder to put as much weight on this 210,000 disappointment than, uh, than one normally would. So I think right. my, my bottom line is that this actually probably was a reasonably firm report, despite this huge downside surprise on the headline payroll number. On labor force supply, uh, Jan, is the, um, is the upside surprise material? Uh, do you think we, we finally bust out of this range, or is it continued noise on that front? Well, I think we are likely to go higher over time. That would, would be still our expectation, despite, despite the, the disappointment that we've seen for most of the year. I think if we focus on the employment to population ratio, which is really the broadest measure of employment strength, you know, there was a five-tenths increase in that ratio for 25 to 54-year-olds. That's a very strong improvement. And you know, it really sort of summarizes the, the strength of the household survey overall. That's, that's really the, the, the sort of one-stop indicator that tells you this was kind of blockbuster household survey, which really puts the payroll disappointment into perspective. Um, what about wages? You know, I'm, I'm curious, particularly at the lower end. What are you seeing? What are your expectations? And what potentially will that mean for the economy? So our working assumption has been that we would converge to something like a 4% wage growth rate adjusted for you know, all the, the compositional changes that, that we're seeing. And we've been running above that clearly over the summer, probably closer to 6%. Um, but there were also a number of special factors, including the unemployment benefits, which ended at the end of the summer on, on Labor Day. And so since then, we've seen some deceleration back from 6 to something closer to 4%. You know, today's number was uh, obviously somewhat below that even. You don't want to put too much weight on one monthly average hourly earnings number, but it does seem that there's some deceleration to a still, still healthy growth rate of, of, of wages, at least on a nominal basis, but not as outsized as what you had over, over the summer. So that's, that's our current, you know, our working assumption, I would say, is consistent with what we saw in today's report. Obviously, there are a lot of indicators, and we'll have to see what happens in future reports on that.